Assalamu alaikum and a good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are now in uh, uh, 2021, that is August 2021. Now, let me take you uh, to August uh, 2019. Now, that was two years ago. Now, how was life in Malaysia two years ago in 2019? Now, people were busy working. Uh, uh, towns and cities uh, were alive, okay? And uh, it was really bustling and busy. And uh, you find that uh, uh, people were all over doing shopping. Huh? And uh, students were going to school. And uh, tertiary students were going to the universities. Uh, there were lots of uh, tournaments happening. Games were taking place. Um, a lot of religious programs were on. Um, now, that was in 2019. Now we are in 2021, that is uh, two years after that. Now, what do we see? Uh, what is the situation now? Now, coronavirus 19, or in short form, it is known as COVID-19, is still at its peak now, um, especially in uh, Malaysia, uh, and also in many, many of the countries in the world. It is still at its peak. Uh, more than... 200 million people worldwide are affected. In fact, they have been infected more than 200 million. And more than 2 million people have actually died because of this COVID-19. And when we talk about school students, more than 825 million students affected. And they were affected from more than 150 countries. So schools are closed. Uh, in fact, in some countries, they are partially opened. And uh, in, uh, in, in a few other countries, schools have, they have started opening up schools. But of course, in Malaysia, schools are still closed. Now, the, so the focus now is, is on home-based learning. Now, when we talk about home-based learning, now suddenly you find that uh, uh, we have become very much dependent on technology. So technology becomes uh, very important in home-based learning. Now, what is the scenario now and the future? Now, you find that it's very important that we have to start thinking differently. Uh, we can't operate the same way we used to operate two years ago. Uh, and we do not know what is going to happen even in future. The future is so uncertain. Uh, we do not know. Now, digital platform uh, is going to become very important. Uh, it's going to become very important. And in fact, di digital platform is linked, is also linked to the fourth industrial revolution. Now, um, the Ministry of Education, uh, a few years ago itself, have started working on the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, according to plan, uh, the, the, the curriculum change should take place in 2025 or 2030, which will, uh, which will cover a lot of component, components from the Industrial Four Revolution. And, in, and, the, in, and uh, in the Industrial Four Revolution, there's going to be a lot of focus on uh, machine learning, uh, robots, um, uh, digital technology, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, cloud computing. Now, just to name a few, uh, all these are going to become important. Now, that is the future. Yeah? And uh, this future, in fact, has to be now accelerated. Now, we have to speed up. We cannot wait for 2025 or 2030 to, to, to start all these uh, digital means of learning because uh, COVID-19 has actually uh, indirectly has uh, required us to start much earlier. Now, because of COVID, a lot of things that we do in a very traditional mode has become a very online base we have now do we are doing eh? uh, say for example online business now uh, we used to go and do shopping in shopping malls and uh, and uh, hypermarkets and uh, and etc but uh, today it's all done through online eh? uh, just to name a few like uh, shopee for example has become very popular eh? a lot of things can be bought through shopee and uh, food, you don't, we don't, uh, we can't go to restaurants. Therefore, we have to, buy, we have to buy it from either Food Panda or even uh, Grab Food. 
Though it was a bit difficult in the beginning, but many people are actually beginning to find it much easier. Eh? Find it much easier, and in fact, it's even better, like to get your things through Shopee. So that now that is uh, purchasing things. Now, when we talk about uh, jobs, now a lot of jobs have also become online now, whether we like it or not. Even in the government sector and the private sector, they are operating from home now through online means. Okay. So, what I believe because of COVID, whatever that we have started through the digital means, uh, even when COVID is eradicated in future, it will not stop. Now, these, all these are going to expand now. It's going to expand and it's going to become, some of these are going to become a permanent feature in future uh, uh, through online. Now, the next issue is what is needed in education now? Now, education must also keep up with these new challenges, the new thinking, uh, the new, the current uh, scenario, the future which we ourselves are not certain. In fact, two years ago, uh, nobody thought that we are going to go through the life that we are going through now. Uh, you have to cover your face with masks uh, and uh, you are not allowed to go out. There is roadblocks everywhere. Nobody expected life is going to be like this. But we should be able to face life uh, in this manner. And we do not know what is going to happen two years or three years to come. The future we, is also a bit uncertain. Therefore, education itself must, must, must keep up with these changes. And we must prepare our students so that they are prepared for any kind of eventualities that, going to hap that, that may happen in the future. Okay? So, one of the focus that we should uh, focus, uh, that we should uh, uh, put emphasis in education is uh, the thinking skills by itself. Though thinking skills are there in, the, in our school system, in the curriculum, but this has to given a, must be given a lot of uh, emphasis, uh, like uh, problem solving, higher order thinking. Now, all these are important. In fact, I believe what is even more important is to introduce design thinking. Now, design thinking simply means that you don't just think of problems, you don't think of problems, but you also come up with solutions. That means students must be taught how to think of issues and at the same time, how to solve the issues. It's not the teachers who are going to stand there and solve. Now, they must be able to solve so that they can prepare themselves for the future. Okay? Now, then, learning by itself. Is it currently we, we are using a, a blended mode of learning or we are also using hybrid learning. Uh, blended mode, if I'm not mistaken, it, it is a combination of online and offline uh, learning. And if you talk about hybrid, you just pick the best according to uh, uh, the right mix, huh? according to the situation, huh? whether it's online or offline. Now, this again, I believe, will be a permanent feature in future, you know, because we have started off even when, a, when the time comes for complete face-to-face -face learning, I believe hybrid learning will still take place. We may in the future uh, be operating some of the learning components to online. Now, so teachers must also be prepared. Now, another aspect in education is we have to start working also with industries, which is very important. Uh, currently, only university students will go and do their practical and all, and I believe it's too late. Mm? It's too late because what is more important is when students are at upper secondary, uh, when they want to move for their respective career choices for tertiary, they must know exactly what field they are aiming for. Let me take uh, one example. Now, if a student, you know, a lot of our good students, they, they always aspire to become doctors <laughs> or engineers but they do not know actually what is in store when they go into a medical school, you know, they do not know. So it's always good, even when they are in the upper secondary, for example, in Form 4, they are, during the school holidays, they are exposed to the industries, for example, they are attached to, the, to a private clinic or a, or a government hospital or something like that for about two, three, two, 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 three weeks so that they understand this is exactly what is in store for them if they were to go and do medicine, for example, this is what is there yeah, in store if they go to a medical school. So in that way, they, 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 they can still change their career. They may decide, suddenly the student may decide that that is not their cup of tea. They may want to go and do an ICT course, or they may want to go and do accountancy, 
or they may want to do lots of other things. In fact, when we talk about uh, IR4, uh, uh, Industrial Revolution 4, a lot of jobs that we have currently may not appear in 2020, 2030. A machine may take over. This is exactly like what was, uh, was what happened in 1970 and now. Uh, we take agriculture as one example. Uh, uh, a lot of agriculture was being done by traditional method. But today you find that the machine has taken over a lot. If you go to some advanced countries uh, where we need 100 people to work in a field, they are just managing with one or two percent. Uh, we can easily get access to the uh, YouTube and see some of these developments that's taking place uh, in advanced countries, how uh, machine has taken over, technology has taken over. So, uh, so I believe networking with industries is also very important. Uh? Now, with, with all this in place now, now what are we going to do? Or the question is, now what is next? Now, I can think of three big areas that we should focus. Now, one is the curriculum by itself. Number two uh, is the assessment. And number three, teachers, very important. Now, I use the term as curriculum as the, as the uh, as the, uh, the main focus that we should look at because now curriculum is a document where everybody will make reference, uh, whether they are textbook writers, uh, whether they are um, uh, people from the industry, uh, whether they are uh, people from the universities, higher education, or whether they are teachers, whether they are parents, everybody will make reference to the textbook, uh, or whether they are from the assessment division. So the curriculum becomes very important. Now the curriculum, the future curriculum, has to take into account all this. It's very important that the curriculum developers make a trip virtually into the future, into 2030 or 35, looking at the current scenario, see what is happening there, and then they have to come back and then start thinking on how uh, uh, students are going to be like and what you have to incorporate, what you have to infuse in the curriculum. Eh? In fact, one of the things I would feel that which is very important uh, is to keep up with the world development is the IR4 itself. Eh? Industrial Revolution 4 components uh, must be included very much. It must be, uh, it must be very dominant in the curriculum. Eh? Not, some, not, not something uh, mentioned very implicitly and all that. Huh? It must be very dominant and it must appear in some dedicated subjects, not infused in uh, English language and, um, and Malay language and history. No, you can't do that. It has to be dominant. Huh? Now, what are some of the areas of industrial four revolution that we can, we can actually incorporate? Now, robotics is one of it. Sim robotics simply means that you are able to design new things. Uh, that's one. Now, other than robotics, coding. Now, coding is also important because um, you ne we need to develop. Uh, uh, you know, co uh, 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 coding is basically uh, talking about computer power. Uh, computer power. So that, uh, and this is done through. They, they have uh, a lot of. Um, uh, ready-made programs, you know, like Sketch and uh, uh, Python. These are some of the programs that you can use to do coding. You know, other than coding, um, Internet of Things, for example. Internet of Things uh, simply means Internet connectivity. You know, eh? And uh, other than that, big data, uh, cloud computing. Now, cloud computing itself is so important now because you can basically store all your data in, in the clouds now. <laughs> it's so easy, you don't have to carry it around. Huh? It's all you can store it there. So uh, students will have to know this. Now, if we don't teach, some or other students will pick up, they will know. And you'll find that teachers will become inferior. They may not know then. <laughs> but students will know, especially now that you have the mobile device with you. Huh? Now, talking about mobile device itself, huh? Nobody thought that the mobile phone that we have now can do all the functions that we have now. Way back in 1950 and 60, when, when, uh, when a researcher said that in 30 years to come, the time the telephone was one black box, you know. You can only use dial and then make your call. And when, when the researcher said that in 30 years to come, this particular device can be, will become very small and you can use it for many, many purposes, well, everybody laughed at him. They thought he was crazy. But just look at today, the phone, the phone that we have can do, I don't have to list down, but you know the kind of functions it has. Huh? The, 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 that is, uh, the, the, you know, the, the technology. 
and the future may also be very different. In fact, robotic elements may become very important. Robot simply means, doesn't mean you have a human being who is a machine walking around. No, a lot of machine learning, you know, machine may take over, okay? Now that is talking about IR4, Industrial Revolution 4. Now, other than that, uh, values education is also important in the curriculum. Eh? In fact, sometimes back, the, the Ministry of Education um, uh, introduced, um, 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 uh, you know, introduced um, uh, civics education, uh, civics education, uh, which is supposed to be, which is supposed to be incorporated in some of the major subjects, uh, and the focus were on uh, uh, on the on the values like uh, like happiness, uh, responsibility. Um, uh, respect for others. Uh, these were some of the values that were actually uh, incorporated. Now, um, and uh, it was actually taught in a few uh, dominant subjects, uh, like uh, in, in English language, in the in in the in, the, in Bahasa Melayu, uh, in history, uh, in um, in religious education, and also in preschool, uh, and also in moral education. And the whole idea of this. Uh, of this uh, values enhancement so that uh, students, you, you will get students, the outcome is to, you'll get students who will respect others, uh, especially we are living in a multiracial uh, society, uh, we respect others for their, for their beliefs, uh, for their religious beliefs, for their lifestyle and all, we respect others, we live in harmony uh, uh, we, we, so that we can create a person who has integrity uh, one who is responsible, and uh, in a nutshell, uh, to produce good citizens. Now that is um, on values enhancement. Now this values enhancement must also be uh, must also appear dominant in the future curriculum, which is important. Other than that, as what I mentioned just now, design thinking must also be included, so that students can be taught how to not just. Uh, come up with problems, but also how to solve the problem, okay? Now, we cannot also forget about early childhood education. Uh, early childhood education must also be given a lot of emphasis because uh, the, uh, a strong foundation is important for early, edu early, for, uh, for early education. Uh? Now, other than that, pedagogical strategies must also keep in line with future needs. Uh? Uh, we, we, we have to move uh, away from some of the pedagogical strategies we are doing now. In fact, if you look at now, when people communicate, they don't communicate anymore through writing letters and all that. Huh? They communicate through Facebook, through Twitter, and through uh, WhatsApp and Telegram, just to name a few. So th these are the current things. So the education must also incorporate all this, must keep in touch with all this. And uh, as I mentioned, now working with industries is very important. Uh, the internship is very important, especially at upper secondary. So this must also appear in the curriculum and it has to be dominant. Now that is talking about curriculum. Now when we talk about assessment, now assessment is also very important. Now currently, how do we uh, define an intelligent student? Intelligent student means one who has got first, second or third in the class and who has got a string of A's. Now that person may not be really intelligent, he may not be capable. And we have find that students who have got a string of A's have also become failures when they go into tertiary education or, or when they go into the working world. So assessment by itself has to be evidence-based, very important. We should be able to, and we should be able to uh, uh, assess students' capability, very important. Huh? It's very important because assessment by itself must also prepare students for the working world, huh? for the working world. And uh, uh, assessment by itself can be both online and offline in future. Not necessary, it has to be face-to-face. -face, huh? So this, um, this is our talking about assessment. And uh, the third factor that is important uh, for the future is teachers. Now, teachers, uh, whether we like it or not, they are very, very important because they are supposed to be the vehicle, you know, huh? uh, the one who is going to bring all this message from the top to the final clients are the students and all, so very important. Now, teachers, they must be willing to learn. They must be willing to unlearn whichever old practices that they learned when they were in the university 30 years ago, they must unlearn, and they must relearn what is new that's happening now huh? because they cannot say that this is what they studied 
when they were in the university 30 years ago, and therefore they will use that. For, they can't do that. And they have to be teachers, I would use the word, huh? they have to be very imaginative, you know, very important. They have to be very imaginative. Imaginative in the sense that they should be able to see the future and they should be come back, they must come back to the present and then you have to start uh, teaching and training students, very important. Huh? Other than that, of course, they have to be passionate, they have to be uh, committed, they have to be role models. Now, I am not saying that our teachers do not have all these qualities. In fact, many of our teachers, most of our teachers, they have all these qualities. But what I'm saying is, these are important factors which should be further enhanced, huh? which should be further improved. Now, other than that, uh, teachers must also read widely. Now, this is very important. Huh? Uh, read widely because when you read, you build up your diction, uh, you, you have better knowledge, you become more focused, you become a better thinker, your grammar gets better, your language gets better, especially English language teachers, you have to read widely. Of course, now we do not necessarily read from hard copies. You can also read from, uh, from, from internet-based materials and all that you can read, whether it's academic or whether it's leisure. Now, reading is very, very important. And um, the role of teacher will also change in future. You know, They are not just teaching, but they also become data collectors. Uh, they will also become analysts, they have to become planners, uh, they have to become curriculum experts, uh, and they have to become researchers. I, I would use the word curriculum experts because you cannot totally depend on the textbook or materials that's available to teach. Now, you should be able to unpack the curriculum, dissect, unpack the curriculum, and then uh, redesign according to your needs, students' needs, and then work on it. And then the textbook and materials become a reference, you know. So teachers must have this kind of capability. And again, I'm saying that it's not that our teachers do not have all these capabilities they have, but this is more like a reinforcement. They have to reinforce, they have to expand on this. So this becomes very important. And of course, teachers have to be English language teachers. If you say you have to be competent in the language, that's very important. Huh? You have to be competent in the language. You have to be competent in the content. Okay. So this are the things that uh, we have to look forward, uh, look forward in the future so that uh, we are able to uh, uh, shape our education better. Now, with all this, what will happen? Now, our final outcome, or I would say our clients are actually our students, you know. Now, whatever we do, if you don't reach to our students, then it's going to be a, a waste. Now, what, with all this, our final outcome is we need students in the future who are capable, who are not road learners, you know, who are capable. They can uh, think for themselves well. They can uh, solve problems. They can come up with solutions. You need this kind of people. So you put them in any kind of situations also, they can survive. Huh? And if you have another kind of pandemic, uh, like COVID or uh, any kind of pandemic that appears in future, you find that our future generation will become prepared because today's students will become future generation. They will become the adults and, and the working people of the future. So they'll be prepared. Huh? Uh, we will not be groping in the dark. They will be prepared. Huh? And uh, they must also, and eventually students will also become, uh, uh, they, they will know, uh, for example, they will know how to survive in the job market, you know. Huh? In future job market, they become very independent. Huh? Uh, it's not that when they graduate, suddenly you find that they're jobless. They will know how to survive. You need that survival skills. Hmm? Of course, we, we cannot uh, run away from the fact that, um, that they, have, they, they, they will also need to be technology savvy huh? because that is the future, huh? technology savvy. Uh, just like teachers, students' outcome, they must also be very imaginative. Uh, students must also be very imaginative and exactly like teachers, they must also be good readers. So if teachers are good readers, they become good role models for students. Students will also become good readers, just like the connection between uh, parents and children. If you find that parents are good readers, uh, they take the children out to the bookstore weekend to go and read books and stuff like that and they sit there together with the children, the children will also read. And when parents read books, children will follow. And so that, that, that role modeling is important. And, um, and, uh, and students must also become good thinkers. And they must also be proficient 
in the English language. Uh, very important. I would say uh, students have to be proficient in the English language because English language is not going to become just for the, uh, for the purpose of communication, no. It is for knowledge acquisition and is for business communication. You find that in the future, we could do it in 1970, we can translate, we can't do any more now. When we are already into a digital kind of education, you find that you will know, you have to know the target language. And you find that most of this uh, uh, digital education and plus all the other knowledge, a lot are in, English, English, are in the English language. Therefore, students will have to know the language so that they will get first-hand information, okay? They will know how to digest and they can apply. And I also use the term business communication because probably in our day-to-day -day conversation, we may not use English so much. But for job purpose in the future, you will be using a lot English. What more if you are going to work uh, with multinational companies? It's already there if you find in, 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 in Cyberjaya, but this is going to grow. Students will be based in Malaysia, but working for companies in uh, in Japan and uh, and uh, U.S. and 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 you know and uh, and companies in London and all that by by just by being here. So the more the the language becomes important. So I would say that our future students will must know English not as an issue of pride, but as an issue of survival. They will need very important. And for that to happen, teachers themselves must also be competent, not just English language teachers, even the non-English language teachers must also build up because we are talking about survival in the future. Yeah? So uh, in a nutshell, uh, now this is generally how uh, I look at education now with all the problems that we're facing. Uh, what we can do now and what, how we can plan for the future so that we can shape education uh, according to the needs of the future, uh, shape education according to the needs of the future, especially um, uh, beyond uh, COVID-19. Okay? Uh, with that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.